So the first lesson in this series is about how the Bible helps you to grow spiritually. It was the Apostle Peter who said, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. No doubt, most Christians understand that the Bible is important to spiritual growth. But the challenge is that sometimes we've, we misunderstand the role that the Bible plays in our spiritual growth. And that can determine our success and failure. It can determine how we approach our Bible reading. Before I share with you the six, the six ways in which the Bible helps you to grow spiritually, I'd like to share with you two things. One, a myth about Bible reading. And two, what your spiritual life would be like without Bible reading. The myth about Bible reading is to suggest that the more I read, the more I'll grow spiritually. That's a myth. It's not automatic. There has to be a deliberate effort. And we're going to talk about that in a little while. However, let me share with you a few things that will happen to you spiritually if you do not take heed to the Word of God. First, you'd, without God's Word, you'll become discouraged by trials. It is a sure thing that the Christian will face tribulation in this world, but the Word of God will help you. The next thing is that not only will you be discouraged by trials, but you're going to be deceived by Satan. Without God's Word in your life, it is you become an easy prey to the temptations and deceptions of Satan. And finally, without God's word, you're going to make bad decisions. I mean, <laughs> even with God's word, some of us make poor decisions, but still, without studying and reading God's word, we make ourselves a hundred times prone to make the wrong decisions. How does God's word help us to grow spiritually? Number one, God's words impact our lives by its promises. These are the most powerful part of God's word. And the reason for that, it is because God is true. God cannot lie. And so his promises can be trusted. There are thousands of promises in the Bible. But there are some that for, especially for a young believer, you need to memorize and claim those promises. One of my favorites is Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. It says, being, confidence of, being confident of this very thing that he who hath begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. That's a very important promise for somebody just starting out, just making a mess of yourself, and sometimes don't even know where you stand, <laughs> where God is. It's, it's comforting to, to be assured that this work is not left up to us. God is a partner in this work. Another important promise is found in Isaiah 54 verse 10. And one of my favorite, it says, For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. That promise is saying that God's faithfulness to us is surer than the mountains and the hills. And so we are, we are assured that despite our shortcomings and our mistake, God is going to be faithful to his part of the bargain. Another promise that I found very useful in my early development is Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 35. It says, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward, because you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. It can be a very discouraging experience when you come to Christ doing what is right and it seems as if the response is just pure disaster. But you need the assurance to know that after you have done God's will, your reward is sure. The second way that God's word impacts our lives spiritually is through its commands. While we claim its promises, we also need to obey its commands. God's word tells us what is right. And that is how we build our lives on Christ, by obeying what is right. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, the Bible says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, 
for correction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. God's word is the one that tells us what is right. God's word also impacts our lives spiritually by its wisdom. And truly, in this journey of life, we need wisdom to make right decisions. This wisdom is different from mere knowledge. This wisdom comes by experience. And so as we obey God's word, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14, Strong meat belonging to them that are full of age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Wisdom is very important. God's word impacts our lives by its prophecies. In Second Peter chapter, in Second Peter chapter one, verse nineteen to twenty-one, Peter referred to prophecy as a sure word of prophecy, even surer than it, than the eyewitness account of him seeing Jesus. In other words, it is prophecy that assures him that Jesus of Nazareth is the Messiah. Jesus did the same thing. When he was resurrected, it was through Bible prophecy that he was able to explain to the disciples why he, what his purpose was and what happened to him. In other words, if the disciples had truly taken heed to prophecy, they would not have been so discouraged when they saw Jesus dying on the cross because they would have known that through prophecy, he was supposed to die. Prophecy tells us two things about the future. Number one, it tells us God's plan. And number two, it tells us what God knows about the future. And God uses this information to help to encourage us and to give us hope in the midst of difficulty. When everything around us is falling apart, prophecy guides our feet and gives us assurance that we are on the right track. The word of God also impacts our lives by its doctrines or teachings. We can trust what God's word has to say about life, about death, about God, about salvation, about creation, about everything. There are some, these are some very important questions in life that many are confused about. Where do we come from? Where are we going? Who am I? What happens to me after I die? These questions are answered by the word of God. And not only do they, does the word of God answer them, but the word of God gives the correct answer. And we need to believe the teachings of scripture and be assured, for example, that we know what is true. If you do not know what is true about the state of the dead, you're going to become discouraged when Satan tries to deceive you by appearing to you like your dead relatives. You have to be solid on the teachings of scripture. Another example, if you do not know what is true about what happens to you when you ask for forgiveness, you're going to become discouraged when you make mistakes. You're going to feel that God has forsaken you or you can't and God will not pardon you. But the Bible tells us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's a part of the doctrine of salvation. So we need to take what the Bible says about these important topics. Finally, the most important impact of the Word of God on our lives is that the Word of God leads us into and deepens our relationship with Jesus Christ and with God. John, John 17 verse 3 says, For this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou art sent. And 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 says that the word of God makes us wise unto salvation. The most important thing about God's word is that it is a conversation with God. It is hearing God's voice and it is helping to build a relationship with God. So just to wrap up, in order for us to truly benefit from God's word, we need to claim God's promises, obey his commands, follow his counsel, hope in his prophecies, find hope through the prophecies, believe its assertions, and trust the person behind the word of God. We need to, we need to trust in Jesus 
and continue to walk in your relationship with him.